So let's go ahead and talk about yesterday. We talked about it a little bit. Crypto.com had shut off basically uh, moving Ethereum outside of their platform. Actually, all cryptocurrency, they reset their two-factor authentication as well. It took me a little bit to get my two-factor authentication back up. I don't know about you all, but the the app was pretty buggy. Luckily, I didn't have a lot in there. We're going to cover the article. Then we're going to cover, of course, once again, the importance of controlling your keys because not your keys, not your crypto. And of course, the part that crypto.com plays. As you guys know, crypto.com is a sponsor of the channel. And there's a very specific reason that they are. And I'll kind of talk about that as well. So this is once again coming from Coindesk. Crypto.com stolen Ether being laundered via Tornado Cash. The Ethereum mixer is being used to obscure destinations of Ethereum pilfered from the crypto exchange. The $15 million in Ether, 4,600 ETH, stolen from Singapore-based Crypto.com is currently being laundered via Tornado Cash, an Ethereum mixer, according to on-chain data. Tornado Cash is an ETH mixer protocol that promises to improve transaction privacy by obscuring the on-chain link between the source and recipient of Ether. The protocol launched in early 2020. On-chain data first spotted by security consultant Peck Shield suggests that the 4600 Ether is being sent through the mixer in batches of 100 Ether. While some say that the mixer protocols or cryptocurrency tumblers are used to protect the privacy of activists or other politically exposed individuals, they are often used to launder proceeds of organized crime. In a previous statement to Coindesk, the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, FinCEN, said the mixers like Tornado Cash may fall under the definition of a money transmitter and therefore have obligations set by the bank sector. Secrecy Act, BSA. Law enforcement has previously shut down other mixers such as Best Mixer, which was raided by European Union authorities in 2019, and Helix, which was shut down by the FBI in 2021 for laundering darknet funds. Tornado Cash co-founder Roman Storm previously told Coindesk in an interview that the protocols work with regulators to <sighs> quell their fears. Version 2 of Tornado Cash includes a cryptographic note in the transaction history of Ether send through its pipes and that can be used to determine fund provenance. Quote, we are in a little bit of a different situation than other Mixer wallets. I think for us, it's very important to become compliant, Storm previously told Coindesk. We do what we feel is right. Tornado Cash's TORN token is up almost 9% during the Asian trading day to $33.31, according to CoinGecko. So, moral of the story, if you are aware of a hack going on, invest in Mixer tokens. That's a joke. That's a joke. This is not financial advice. All right. I got to take my motorcycle boots off. So we have a lot of things going on here. First of all, we have the hack of crypto.com that we can go over more. Uh, in general, not your keys, not your crypto. Centralized exchanges should be used for liquidation of your cryptocurrency into a fiat asset to pay for things like power, costs, rent, etc or liquidating to pay whatever other needs or wants you may have uh, in the case that you can't purchase it with cryptocurrency directly. Uh, a centralized exchange should never be used to store your crypto, especially crypto you plan on holding for long term. This is very important to basically adhere to because in the case that you have something like a hack, or regulation that goes into place that shuts down any sort of um, moving of your cryptocurrency outside of the the exchange well basically you can count that cryptocurrency as lost forever this was much more um, adhered to early on in cryptocurrency because hacks were so prevalent and a lot of the companies didn't have the security in place to protect them so I guess the old crypto boomers at this point 
already knows that already know this and are familiar kind of with these concepts a lot of new people are purchasing of course cryptocurrency through centralized exchanges and then holding their cryptocurrency there in addition to that we also have exchanges that are popping up that are tied to traditional stock trading platforms that you can purchase crypto in but you cannot send that cryptocurrency out or basically transfer any cryptocurrency into the app, making it basically completely pointless to use those platforms for trading. Things like Robinhood would be an example here. Now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about mixers, privacy, that sort of thing. Ever since the inception of the internet early on, there has been a concern with privacy and security on the individual level. The individual's right to privacy is paramount in cryptocurrency, within cryptocurrency in general, and within cryptography in general. The point of it was to essentially enable individuals to go ahead and keep their data private and autonomous and, and detached basically giving you the freedoms and all of that that as a human some people would say that uh, is your right right your god-given right however you want to look at it these are concepts that have been kicked around since the 90s early 90s and ever since the early 90s the federal government along with of course any powers to be multiple federal governments have been against this idea Typically, it, what, it resulted in lots of raids of even comic book stores for books and uh, role-playing strategy games such as GURPS for Steve Jackson Games in Austin, Texas. And that is kind of the start of the history of basically individuals trying to maintain their privacy while also being attacked by the federal government. And this can get a little tricky. Because, of course, the main attack is going to be saying, of course, crimes are being committed through these technologies. And therefore, we should basically allow this to be regulated. And it depends on how you look at it and what you believe as far as your importance to your individual rights versus the safety of the public. And I'll leave that up to you. What I'm trying to do is give you a little bit of a history lesson on how this is shaped out. Now, as it ends up being here in 2022, as opposed to 94, 95, most, if not all of the privacy on the internet has been completely stripped. Uh, on top of that, most of the rights have begun to be stripped. Uh, more and more as we get further and further into the development of different technologies to the point to where speech is limited. Now, whether or not you agree with said speech is, you know, a different topic in general, but just the idea of moving from, of course, removal of your privacy into removal of your speech is kind of the path of to which the the powers that be will basically manipulate any said story to influence some sort of regulation over it. Now, as far as my personal opinion goes, I would say, of course, that I understand that crimes being committed need to be stopped and there needs to be a way to manage this and figure it out. That being said, I don't think that we should sacrifice our privacy uh, to do so. And this has been going on in crypto for a long time because originally at the very beginning of cryptocurrency, there was a huge push for privacy cryptocurrencies. One of them being, of course, Monero or the most popular one. And really in the early boom of ICOs and all of that sort of thing in 2016, it was really, really popular to release a privacy focused cryptocurrency. Unfortunately, really, what we've seen as far as the shift within crypto in general has moved completely away from privacy and security and moved into, of course, well, collectible kitty cats. And so that focus shift has really kind of lost sight of what cryptocurrency was created to do. Uh, we could say the same for like email encryption and so on as well. 
when we start talking about mixers, etc., of course, and their potential uses, of course, they will have potential uses for crimes. Does that mean that we give up the security and privacy uh, as an individual so that the federal government can pursue this and so on? Once again, I'm going to go ahead and go with the big brain concept here of, well, if you were controlling your own crypto keys, then that is your own personal responsibility. And this really wouldn't infect you on an individual level. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.